the garden planet. Provider for billions. Since the beginning of recorded time, there have been entire societies which have sustained themselves solely on plant life. A varied, nourishing plant life in which our world is so rich. Today, there are still societies whose diet is largely shaped by the ancient vegetarian tradition. In Jerusalem, chickpea patties are folded into pita bread to make falafel, the favorite fast food of the Middle East. Even here, in the bustling modern West, land of steak and chops, the vegetarian tradition is making inroads. Most major cities now feature several vegetarian restaurants. Govinda's in Los Angeles draws on many cultures and thousands of years of culinary tradition. There's chow mein and curry, enchiladas, and my favorite, eggplant parmesan. You may be wondering exactly what a vegetarian is, and in a sense the answer is very simple. It is. Someone who doesn't eat the flesh of animals, whether it's fish, meat, or fowl. But if you ask people why they're vegetarians, the more complicated, you soon start to realize that vegetarianism isn't just a diet. It's an entire approach to life. Bon appetit. One of the main reasons I became a vegetarian was ethical because I don't see any reason with all the protein available today to have to destroy animal life to sustain our lives. I would go to these fish restaurants and I would sit, there was this one place I used to go in LA that has this aquarium with these beautiful tropical fish and I'd be sitting there having my shrimp and this one evening all these gorgeous fish just came over to the edge of the tank and were just sitting there looking at me. And I, I said, that's it, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I dislike blood, and uh, since being a vegetarian, I find it the most economical way of living. C'est pour euh, permettre de montrer aux gens qu'on peut se nourrir avec une méthode qui, qui donne la possibilité de de nourrir plus de gens avec la même surface de terre cultivée. I'm a vegetarian mainly because I got tired of eating meat and I just like to say very simply that I feel better being a vegetarian. Wir freuen uns und wir möchten unseren Kindern mit gutem Beispiel vorangehen und wir hoffen, dass sie weiterhin äh, sich für den Vegetarismus und für die naturgemäße Lebensweise äh, einsetzen und wir hoffen eben, dass sie ein Beispiel sind für unsere Umgebung und für unsere Kinder vor allen Dingen. Hey, I'm the owner of Nature Boy Restaurant, uh, Lower East Side, Manhattan. Before I opened up this restaurant, there was a boxer. I fought professionally for three years. My manager uh, put me onto vitamins and vegetarian food, and I've stayed that way ever since. If cows get killed, it's the same as people get killed. I am 84 years old. No meat or fish has entered my body in over 50 years. Uh, as a matter of fact, every meal that I enjoy is a banquet. Anyone who takes up vegetarianism finds himself in some very illustrious company. Socrates advocated vegetarianism, as did the Greek mathematician Pythagoras, and the poet Shelley, Albert Schweitzer, the great missionary. Their vegetarianism was an expression of a highly moral attitude to living. Another vegetarian, Leonardo da Vinci, confided his views to his notebook. I have, from an early age, forsworn the use of meat, and the time will come when men will look upon the murder of animals as they now look 
upon the murder of men. So now, uh, take a good look at me, because I am the actual, real, original Bernard Shaw. Now, how do you like that? <laughs> George Bernard Shaw also practiced vegetarianism. In his later years, his doctors tried to persuade him to change his eating habits. Shaw replied, Life is offered to me on the condition of eating beefsteaks, but death is better than cannibalism. Animals are my friends. I don't eat my friends. In Russia, Count Leo Tolstoy felt very strongly about the eating of animal flesh. He wrote, it is directly immoral since it demands an act which is contrary to our moral sense, murder. Isaac Bashiva Singer, a winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature and a vegetarian. He sees vegetarianism as the most important issue of our time. All my life I felt that slaughtering animals, just that we should be able to eat them, was the wrong thing. While we keep on asking mercy from God, we have no right to be merciless ourselves towards uh, creatures which are weaker than we are. Although it is uh, assumed that when Moses said, thou shalt not kill, he meant people. But I feel that animals are also people. They also have souls. It is a terrible thing that we human beings have been practicing slaughter for so many hundreds and thousands of years and we never really think about it. This whole idea of taking an innocent creature and slaughtering it and hurting it is to me an abomination. Some of the world's greatest religions express the same attitude to animal life. In India, the Hindus teach that animals like humans have souls and are evolving towards a higher consciousness. The cow is considered especially sacred. No Hindu will kill or eat one. Buddha urged his followers to refrain from destroying any life. As a result, many Buddhists today are vegetarians. Another Eastern religion, Jainism, found its central principle in Ahimsa, reverence for all life. In their attempt to minimize violence to any sentient being, all Jains are practicing vegetarians. At the Jain Meditation International Center in New York, Western Jains celebrate Thanksgiving with a vegetarian feast. The founder of the center and the first Jain master to bring this philosophy to the West was Sri Chitrabhanu. And as we feel the pain and pleasure, in the same way other living beings also experience the same thing. And everybody has or everything has the right to live. So our life must be such that we minimize our violence and we don't become a burden or pain any living being. The Jain teachings deeply influenced Mahatma Gandhi, who led India to independence. Gandhi, a Hindu, embraced non-violence and the practice of the vegetarian way of life. In France, one of Gandhi's disciples founded the community of the Ark, here in an ancient French abbey, over a hundred people, most of them Catholic, live in a self-supporting vegetarian community. Members of the Ark are committed to non-violence and the fundamental unity of all religions.
The Jewish faith, too, contains ancient writings supporting a vegetarian outlook. The chief rabbi of Israel is a vegetarian, as is the chief rabbi of Haifa, Shah Yishev Cohen. Very deep in our Kabbalah, which is the mystic tradition of uh, the Jewish religion, is the belief that you can find in a human being, you can find in an animal, the same living spirit, which is divine. It's true, the Jewish religion allowed animals to be consumed, and uh, it's part of the religion, the procedure of eating kosher food, you limit the number of animals you can eat, the kind of animals you can eat, but we explain all that as stages educating mankind towards the idea of being a vegetarian. In the West, we are encouraged to eat meat from a very early age, and we think nothing of it. Or do we? Studies have been done on the reactions of children to the discovery that they're eating the flesh of animals. At the Primal Center in Toronto, Canada, psychologist Eric Weiner. Freud wrote, and I quote, that the child unhesitatingly attributes full equality to animals. He probably feels himself more closely related to the animal than to the undoubtedly mysterious adult. In our society, we augment this tendency tremendously. We give stuffed teddy bears to children, dogs, toy ducks, all kinds of animals. Their storybooks and their cartoons are populated by talking animals. Look, Boo, the pair bands at a straw house. Uh, pardon me, little piggies. We're lost, and uh, we're looking for our home. Well, you're home now if you want to live in this house. This we house? then take this child, and at some point around five or six, they become aware that what they're eating is nothing less than their beloved animals. Most children, given the choice, I think would become vegetarians. I am a vegetarian because I like animals and I don't like to see them suffer or hurt or anything like that. When Elena was about five, we were having dinner one day, I think it was lamb chops, and she pointed to it and she said, is that an animal? And we said, uh, yes it is. She said, what kind of animal is that? And I said, uh, lamb. And she was absolutely appalled that this should be a real animal, come from a real animal. And she said, but I don't understand. Why are you eating this? If you, if you say you love animals, how come you're eating it? And my husband and I didn't have an answer for that. Most of us pick up our nicely packaged steak or chicken or fish as if meat grew painlessly like apples or plums on a tree. Meat is so much a part of our culture that we think there's something odd if we don't eat. We even think that there's no other choice, but there is. Are you aware that animals are suffering in order to put food on our tables? For example, a veal calf spends its 14-month life imprisoned in a tiny pen. Exercise toughens muscles, so movement is restricted and the animal is deliberately kept anemic, all for the sake of tender white meat, the fashionable milk-fed veal. The calf's short life is punctuated with a battery of injections, growth hormones, weight-inducing drugs, and antibiotics to keep the animal alive in spite of its weakened condition. What's the effect of all this? At McMaster University, Canadian biochemist and vegetarian Ross Hume Hall offers two reasons for questioning our veal calf procedures. The physiology of the animal is, is, is really um, disturbed. And, um, and when you get meat from these kinds of animals, you're eating meat that's uh, not from what I would call a healthy animal. And so I just don't wish to, I don't think we want to be sort of part of that, uh, of this scene. The second reason is that is the large number of drugs that are given to uh, farm animals. And uh, a lot of these drugs have residues, uh, leave residues in the meat. And again, this is another uh, component of the diet I just don't wish to have any part of. Um, now, one might say, of course, that uh, vegetables contain residues. They contain pesticide residues. And that, that's, of course, true. It's, you can't avoid residues. But the, veg the vegetarian style of diet, you do minimize uh, these added uh, factors that uh, your body can, uh, can do without. 
people often wonder if you can be healthy on a vegetarian diet. They seem to think as vegetarians as anemic or too weak to walk. Well, the fact is you can be even healthier. For example, vegetarians are less likely to die from certain kinds of cancer and they're far less prone to heart disease for a very simple reason. Meat contains fat. Eating large amounts of animal fat creates high levels of a substance in the bloodstream called cholesterol. High cholesterol levels contribute to the buildup of fatty deposits in the arteries that feed the muscles of the heart. If a blood clot forms on the fatty deposit and blocks the artery, the heart muscle it feeds will die. This is a heart attack. Seventh-day Adventists have a low incidence of heart attacks. Is this because many members of this religious group are vegetarians? Or because they also avoid another major contributor to heart disease? Smoking. A recent study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition suggests an answer. This graph represents the death rate due to heart disease among Californian men between the ages of 35 and 64. For non-smokers in this segment of the population, the rate is, predictably, lower. But it's lowest of all for those Seventh-day Adventists who neither smoke nor eat meat. You may have noticed that I have been referring to vegetarians as if they were one single homogenous group. But in fact, all vegetarians do not eat alike. Some avoid all foods that are of animal origin in the pure or vegan diet. Others, like myself, simply avoid eating meat. The lacto-ovo vegetarian diet includes some animal protein in the form of dairy products, milk, eggs, and cheese. Each of these diets can supply all the nutrients you need. For example, the average daily protein requirement for an adult is about 50 grams. Most people who eat meat take in twice this amount each day. The lacto-ovo diet also supplies well above the required protein level. But perhaps surprisingly, so does the vegan diet, the purest of the vegetarian diets. One authority who agrees you don't need meat to enjoy good health or good meals is the American author of Diet for a Small Planet, Francis Moore LePay. People uh, think of a, a meat diet as more interesting, but actually it is the plant world that has the variety. There's something more, probably more than a hundred different commonly eaten plants almost all of which have some protein in them. Sources of vegetable protein include leafy vegetables, grains, nuts, and legumes such as peas, beans, and lentils. If you eat these foods in certain combinations, say, wheat bread with baked beans, you get even more usable protein than if you were to eat an equal amount of just one of these foods. A wide variety of vegetables, nuts, grains, and fruits will also supply all the vitamins and minerals you need. Vitamin B12, rare in most plant sources, can be obtained from soybean products such as tofu, called bean curd by the Chinese. Tofu, also rich in protein, can enhance any number of dishes. Of course, eating plant protein rather than centering one's diet on meat protein is also a lot cheaper. It certainly has been in my family much cheaper. And just to, to give you one illustration, it would take you eight times more money to supply your daily protein need on porterhouse steak than it would on soybean products. Recent years have seen a steadily growing interest in the techniques of vegetarian cooking. But whether your favorite cooking style is Japanese or French or simply one of your own invention, a well-prepared vegetarian dish is a treat for both eye and palate. Okay, belle pizze, bella pizza vegetariana. People still ask, can you be a vegetarian and also be in top shape physically? Tennis pro Peter Burwash. A number of years ago, actually 1970, I was fortunate enough to run into a group of doctors who explained that an athlete should not eat meat about six months before an event. 
And at that particular point in time, it was very difficult for me to even consider being a vegetarian. However, it made a lot of sense from an athletic point of view, from a practical point of view, physiological, moral. And so I made the adjustment. And after one year as a vegetarian, I had the highest fitness index of any athlete in Canada. Originally, I was up around number 50 or 60, so I already had a fairly high degree level of fitness anyway. However, once I became a vegetarian, I had a chance to experience a number of different things. My oxygen uptake, my blood flow increased. Not only did I have more endurance, my recovery time was a lot better. Instead of spending 30 to 40 seconds to get my breath back, I was only spending 10 to 12 seconds. Worldwide, there is abundant evidence that vegetarians need and lack energy. In England, the Muchindokai Karate School for Vegetarians. In Switzerland, vegetarian resorts offer invigorating holidays to travelers from across Europe. Here near Israel's Sea of Galilee, the vegetarian lifestyle has given rise to an entire community, Amarim. This vegetarian village grows its own food without chemical pesticides or fertilizers. Carobs combine with nuts and figs to produce a popular sweet. And from the pomegranate tree, an unusual juice. At Amarim, a lavish feast is served on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. In the cities of the world, vegetarianism has become an integral part of the cultural mosaic. International air travelers now have the choice of full course vegetarian meals. Londoners dine in style at elegant vegetarian bistros. There is an expanding number of vegetarian organizations. One of the world's oldest and largest is the Vegetarian Society of the United Kingdom. It has been publishing its research and answering the public's questions for a century and a half. In Holland, there are over 100,000 vegetarians. The Dutch Vegetarian Society has founded Felix Ward, a home for vegetarian senior citizens. There's one last important question that vegetarianism leads us to, and it has to do with the use we make of our farmland. Some authorities believe that it's wrong to go on allocating so much of it to meat production. They point out that if our crops were directed towards people rather than towards animals, we could feed many more of the Earth's hungry population. British biochemist Dr. Alan Long. We find that, for instance, one third of the world's cereal crops is grown to feed the animals, the farm animals, in the rich nations. If the world could reduce its consumption of meat by 10%, then we could feed 60 million people more. It's estimated that one acre devoted to grain uh, produces five times as much in terms of the nutrients that people can eat compared to if that same acre were devoted to livestock production. One acre devoted to legume production produces something on the order of ten times more protein than if it were devoted to livestock production. And leafy vegetables, the comparison is 15 times more protein produced on an acre devoted to livestock production. 
It requires up to eight pounds of grain to produce one pound of grain-fed beef, grain that could be used to feed people. If Canada, for example, stopped feeding the grain to meat animals, there'd be enough of a food surplus to feed another 50 million people. But the world's hungry population keeps growing and growing faster. I know that even if we all became vegetarians in the world, we will not have eliminated world hunger. That as long as people who are hungry don't have the land and don't have the money they need to feed themselves, they will be starving, as more and more people in the world are. What I believe is that as we, the importance is that as we choose a diet that we know is the best for our bodies and the best in terms of what the earth can, can supply for the most people, as we make that conscious choice, we are changing ourselves. As we change ourselves into more conscious people, then we are more powerful in our efforts to change the world. It's not, uh, let's say, analytic algebra where you, keep, you, can, you, you can know it better and still better and still better. It is a very simple idea. And I don't think we have really to try to make from it a very profound idea. It is profound because it is so simple and so obvious. My feelings also are that in the future men will have no choice. He will have to, to stay away from slaughter because people are multiplying in a very big way. There may be 100 years from now uh, 50 billion people or more so, and there will be not enough pasture to keep so many animals. In other words, I really believe that the future of humanity, what is good in the future, will be connected with vegetarianism. For many, the practice of a vegetarian way of life is a voyage of discovery into a world of richer health, of more humane ethics, and the vision of a better global economy. At the heart of this discovery is the knowledge that all life forms on this planet are inextricably linked. It is a way of life beginning with the individual that not only affects our friends and neighbors, but ultimately the well-being of our entire planet.